they contact me and then they said that I have a lot of innovation and which is really good for humans. You know, instead of throwing this away, uh, cause of pollution, we put the fungus in and it's become very useful for humans. When animals consume antibiotics, mm -hmm. they have this kind of thing left over. Mm -hmm. When we consume their meat, it's also getting the antibiotic as well. Sadiqa, welcome to Thailand. Today, I'm Kusuma Yota Sumut. How much will anyone pay for an aphrodisia? A uh, Wagakara pill costs between $6.75 and $20 in the West. Korean ginseng sells for $30 for a pack of 30 pills. One bottle of Thai herbs is retailed for $5. A rare Asian fungus or Tang Chao was quoted at the whooping $40,000 per pound in 2015. Also known as Himalayan caterpillar, or Himalayan Viagra, it is good for treating erectile dysfunction and low libido in women. Well, it does have other conventional benefits, but would you like to pay for such a punishment price? A Thai researcher has the answer. Thailand today is delighted to have as our guest today, Professor Dr. Pon Anung Aramid of the Department of Pharmacy Practice, Faculty of Pharmaceutical Science, Jualongkorn University, to talk about her indigenous award-winning invention, one which has been richly rewarded. Please join me to welcome Professor Dr. Pon Anung Aramid from the Department of Pharmacy Practice, Faculty of Pharmaceutical Science, Chulalongkorn University. Sawadika. Sawadika. You're very much welcome to Thailand today. My honor as well. Thank you. Well, a very important topic we're talking to Professor today. She's a young, energetic, and beautiful doctor who really brought back to Thailand many uh, awards and uh, names. So what it's all about, we're going to ask her now. Actually, I got like a decoration yes. from European Union. Ah. It's the highest ranking yes. called Grand Officer. Mm -hmm. So actually, they have four rankings. Mm -hmm. The first one is a Chevalier mm -hmm. Officer, yes. and then Commander, uh -huh. and Grand Officer. It's such a great honor. Great. But before we touch into how do you get this such a highest award, such a decoration from the the president, I suppose, of the exactly. country. Tell me about briefly about introduce yourself and your workplace. Why, why do you entitled to have those things? Okay, start from my study, yes. my education. Yes. Yeah, I got my PhD uh -huh. from USA, uh -huh. University of Wisconsin Madison. Mm -hmm. At that time, I work with protein. Mm -hmm. So we try to s learn mm -hmm. what kind of protein is good for health, mm -hmm. and how can we use it for the drug delivery. Mm. After I came back to be a faculty member at Chulalongkorn University, mm. I started working on the protein in Thailand. Mm. So my specialist is about Thai silk. You know, since okay. we have a lot of protein uh -huh. in silk, so we think that we can use it mm. as a health supplement mm. or we can use it for other purpose mm. in medical as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Very interesting, very interesting because once you see things up, you, you seem to be pulling up and producing into it. So many inventions was, uh, was nominated by you. So uh, how, can you tell me about uh, the highest order that you were talking about once again? So how did you come into it? Because, uh, well, t you said you, you, you have uh, invented that, yeah? That yes. particular thing. Yes. And then who knows about it? Actually, no one knows. Uh, you really? know, when we uh -huh. work, work in the lab, uh -huh. you know, no one knows about it. Yes. So what we did is we just published the paper. Okay. You know, like a uh, <laughs> journal articles mm -hmm. that we submit, mm -hmm. and after that, people read about it. Mm -hmm. They contact me from abroad, oh. whether I interested in joining the competition okay. or the exhibition of this. Uh -huh. So I start going abroad 
and do a lot of stuff during the, my research. Yes. And we found that we have a lot of things to show them. Uh -huh. And the last year that uh -huh. I mentioned, you know, they contact me and then they said that I have a lot of innovation mm. and which is really good for mm. humans. Mm. So they invite me to join Brussels Innova, mm. which is in Brussels, of course, wow. you know, and then they offer me uh -huh. the highest ranking of the decorations. Oh, well, uh, so uh, what, what are the products that you have invented? Oh, we have several. Several, several. If I explain what I'm doing, it's going to take more than three days. <laughs> <laughs> but we need to know, right? Yeah. Uh, briefly, yeah, briefly yes, you know, yeah, briefly. we have a lot of stuff that uh -huh. we take care of the patient. For example, mm -hmm. we use silk protein mm -hmm. to do the wound dressing properties in case of you have a big wound. Uh, like of what? Burn wound? Yes, wound burn yes. wounds. And uh -huh. instead of cutting a good skin to cover that, we no longer need that. Oh. We use the silk protein okay. to make artificial skin. Uh -huh. You know, this is the one that I start working with long time ago, yes. and it's become successful already. Oh. We already transfer the technology to other countries to produce it and sell it worldwide. Okay. And after that, we also use the silk protein oh. to do artificial tendon, oh. you know, and artificial bones. Oh. We also study the property of silk in other aspects, for example, for the cosmetics, mm. you know, we use it as a facial mask. Mm. I'm sure that it's mm. really popular right now mm. because serosin, which is a silk protein, mm. have a collagen promoting activities. Mm. So it can promote the collagen production mm. and good for skin. Mm. Besides that, you know, today we're going to talk about one of my research, you know, which is Tang Chao. So before we go to that, I need you to know that because I don't know when people or our uh, we were in 177 country well, why you knew or get uh, accustomed to the word the Tang Chao. Tang Chao is, is what actually? Actually, Tang Chao is a name that we call in Thailand. Uh -huh. However, in other countries, they call different names. It seems to be like a Chinese name. Yes, it's a it's, it's originated, originated from China. From China. Okay. However, in scientific name. We call it cordyceps. Oh, cordyceps. Yeah, yes. but we call it right now. We can call it cordyceps or tang chao. It means the same okay. thing. It's what? Is a is a plant? No, it's is a fungus. A it's a fungus. Yes. People do eat fungus. Yes. Don't worry. It's the same as you consume yogurt. You oh, know, so, so it's do no harm to your body. Uh -huh. However, this speci specific fungus mm. they need to grow in insect only. You know, it cannot grow on rice or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They grow only on the insects. Mm -hmm. And they love cool temperature. So they love to grow on the mountain or something like that. Mm -hmm. China or Chinese people, mm -hmm. they consume a lot of Tang Chao mm -hmm. because they have a lot of this fungus in their countries. But first of all, why do we have to eat the fungus? What you know for? Why? <laughs> for your immunity. You know, oh, it strengthens so. your immune. This is the most important. Okay. Can you believe that all disease that we have now today, asthma, hypertension, mm -hmm. or you know, if you have like SLE, mm -hmm. everything because of your own immune. You know, you lack of immunity. Mm -hmm. Tang Chao have a very good property because it can strengthen your immune. Mm -hmm. So it can prevent from all the disease. Mm -hmm. However, from its look, People get scared, mm -hmm. so you can see like a uh, uh, tang shao in a dosage of appeals. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you can take it easier, and then it's faster to acting something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Now we let before we go move on to we still have a lot of time to talk about this matter. But uh, first, you have uh, invented the mask and those things out of the silk, out of the coconut. Yes. Skill and all that. And now come to the Tang Chao that she's talking about. So uh, you have something which is the one that yes. you supposed to be... You know, before I go further to oh, my product, I would like to explain a little bit. Yes, please. Normally, Tang Chao, you consume it in human, right? Yes. But for my idea, instead of paying a lot of money to buy Tang Chao, which is a natural source, from Bhutan, from Tibet, or from China. We think about the waste of the agriculture in Thailand. You know, so what we think of, as I mentioned earlier, oh. I work with silk. Okay. You know, silk 
worm mm -hmm. is considered as one kind of an insect. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it? Mm -hmm. You know, if you take a look at the mm -hmm. silk worm, mm -hmm. you know, after you learning all the fiber, okay. you will have something like this right. left over, okay. which is silk larva or silk cocoon. You cocoon. know, you just throw it away. Oh, yeah. uh. You know, this one normally we didn't use it. Okay. We yes. give it as a fish meal. You know, oh. we throw it to the oh, really? corn and then fish uh. it as their food. Uh. Uh -huh. However, the you know no value added at uh. all. Uh -huh. Become really cheap. You okay. know, hundred kilogram of this. They sell only 20 bahts. So what I'm thinking is, if we can use this one, which is a kind of insects, mm. and infected with the fungus, mm. we can also create the cordyceps ourselves, mm. which is a man-made one. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of throwing this away, mm -hmm. uh, cause of pollution, we put the fungus in, and it's become very useful for human. I also produce the cordyceps for human as a food supplement mm -hmm. with the same procedure mm -hmm. but you need longer time mm -hmm. you know to, longer time to, to incubate it to incubate, incubate it. the uh -huh. fungus uh -huh. with the silkworm oh, yeah. besides that i also make a cordyceps as an animal feeding you know so what we try to do you know if you can take a look at this this yes. a, this is a picture of a cordyceps in nature okay you know what yes. we did is we use the seed worm to be their food to grow up to for, grow the fungus, for the fungus, right? Yes. And we get something like this. If you take a look closely, you can see a white stuff. Yes. That is a fungus. Uh. You know, this one we keep it in a closed container because it keep growing. Okay. You know, after a while, you know, if you want to use it as a health supplement, you can bring it out, put it in a pill, so people not so scared of the silk worm and you can consume it. Okay. However, for myself, mm -hmm. I think that we can add it mm. for our agricultural products mm. as well. Instead of using the antibiotics, mm. they mm. no longer use antibiotics because this one will strengthen the immune of our animal as well. Mm. So the fungus that are being produced uh, by maybe they call it Himalayan caterpillar or something exactly. like that. Exactly. No, well, it was. It is very expensive. Exactly. Said, how much it should be like? You know, uh, the nature one, uh, the originally from yeah. Tibet or China, yeah. the price can go up to one kilogram for one mi million baht. One million baht for yes. one kilogram. Yes. And you can do substitution for that. Of course, and the amount of the active ingredient is pretty similar mm. to the one that we found in the nature. Mm. And the price is only like one or two percent. <laughs> That's why we can use it for animal feeding, mm. you know, because the price is a big difference. She is so broad-minded, moving from people. We're going to come back and talk about why it's good for the people, especially men. But <laughs> and then uh, now it's also helpful to the animal also. So you grow the rare Himalayan fungus, Course. right, on the dead silkworms. Yes. So that, that, that's what it's supposed to be. Yes. And actually right now we got the funding from yes. uh, the National Council, the Research Council of Thailand, yes. NRCT, okay. and also Thailand Research Fund okay. to expand my knowledge Ooh. to the farmer. Okay. So instead of the farmer, especially in the northern part of Thailand, uh -huh. who have a lot of uh -huh. silk uh -huh. worm or silk cocoon, uh -huh. they can use the mm. dead one that they unused mm -hmm. to be useful with the foods mm -hmm. of the animals and you know can increase the value of mm -hmm. the waste. Mm -hmm. So right now we're in the process of expanding and be sure you know many countries really love to buy this product. For example Greece they contact me and they want to buy for their agricultural product as well mm -hmm. you know because it's green products no leftover of the antibiotics mm -hmm in the meat or the food, so they're really happy about it. Let me be very clear, doctor. This is meant for animal food. Exactly. It's to be mixed up in the food. Yes. Or purely eating. No, very good question. Actually, you know, you can see like the package is not that big. Uh -huh. So if you have to give to the cow, you have to give tons of this. Of course. So what uh, the indication how we use it, we use one pack of this 
which is about 100 grams, grams. Uh, mixed to about uh, one to hundreds. Mm. Okay. You know, and we give the 100 part is a normal food. Oh, right. We give the mixed one okay. to animal twice a week. Okay. That's it. And mm. the animal you talk about all kinds of? Yes, we can use with a chicken, mm. pigs, sheep, and cows. And what do they get? And wha wha what happens after they're eating all this? They become very strong. They have a very good immune uh -huh. and no need of the antibiotics. Okay. You know that uh, in the big farm, mm. we need to put a lot of antibiotics mm. to make yes. sure that they have no contamination mm. between one animal which have a disease and then transfer to others. In order to prevent that, we have to give antibiotics. Mm. So instead of giving that, we mm. give this one, which is all mm. natural. Mm. And don't worry, mm. fungus is do no harm to them as well. Mm, very interesting, and I, I'm now no doubt because when before we start talking to Doctor uh, Ponanong, I was thinking that how could he get this uh, uh, decoration? But now I know because it's, it's not an easy thing that someone to think about how to create such thing, and and we are, and also our ASEAN country also a uh, kind of agricultural uh, exactly. country. Yes, uh, this kind of things. So, uh, so how do they get this? How do the people, if they wanted to have some of them? No, at this time, we try to expand our oh. knowledge okay. because, you know, animals need a lot of food to eat, right? right. We have to make tons of this. Yes. For myself, I cannot do it. Mm -hmm. You know, so we need the help from farmers. Mm -hmm. Besides that, not only the, this kind of animals, mm -hmm. the yeah. aqua animal, mm -hmm. fish, shrimp, Mm -hmm. still can use it. Okay. So we developed something else that yeah. for aqua animal as well, okay. this one. Oh, that you can so. see that uh, we put this uh, cordyceps into their food directly. Oh. So this one will float oh. on the waters okay. and animals in the water can eat it mm -hmm. without any problems and it strengthens their immune as well. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, who support this? Who is doing that? As I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. we have a lot of agencies in Thailand who right. support this. For yeah. example, like the National Research Council of Thailand, mm -hmm. Thailand Research Fund, yes. and Agricultural Agency, mm -hmm. that they do a lot of stuff in mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. They're very interested, mm -hmm. but mainly from these two organizations. Mm -hmm. All natural, safe, and further ways of livestock production. This is our country need. Exactly. Not only our country, all over the world. Yes. If we, so that from now on, if we consume any of the animal that consume this, that we will not get sick or disease or... Uh, yeah, or and that, the most that, important... Does that mean that if I'm wrong, please correct me. You are totally yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And the most important, we have a less chance mm -hmm. of get the antibiotic left over from those animals. Mm. The thing is, when animals consume mm. antibiotics, mm -hmm. they have this kind of thing left over mm -hmm. in their farm, in their meats. Mm. When we consume their meats, it's also getting the antibiotic as well. Wow. And if mm -hmm. we keep getting that, we can get the resistance. Mm. You know, when we got infected, yeah. same kind of mm. antibiotic cannot be used anymore. All right. So if mm. we use this totally antibiotic free, mm -hmm. uh, friendly to environments, you know, and also, of course, cause less pollution due mm. to, you know, we don't need to throw away mm. the silkworm into the mm. nature anymore. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's being a value added yeah, yes, to the countries and, and to the farmers. And we have plenty yes. of that. As a professor of the Chalangkorn uh, Pharmacy uh, uh, Department, how do you, the student get uh, knowledge or do whatever you do? Uh, uh, so, and to the student? Of course, normally all the project that we have is going to be the thesis of one of my students. You know, my PhD student. Okay. Normally, I work with a uh, clinical pharmacy department or mm. pharmacy practice. Mm -hmm. What we did is we have to go to the hospital, uh, round with all the doctor, mm -hmm. give them the advertising or you know the information mm -hmm. about the new products. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we also transfer the technology mm -hmm. to the student. They know how to do this, how to test the active ingredients. Mm -hmm. This is really important. Mm -hmm. Normally if you create something, you do something you never know 
You know, exactly. a lot of farmer they just do this without mm -hmm. knowing the active ingredients mm -hmm. in their products. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we provide the service. If they would like to know when they put the fungus into the silk worm that they have, mm -hmm. will they have the same amount of mm -hmm. active ingredients? Mm -hmm. So they send it to us. Mm -hmm. And my PhD student will do the experiment, report back to them, you know, and we did all the clinical study. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that this one have no toxicity to human. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we asked someone to consume it mm -hmm. for three months. Oh, really? Yeah, check their blood level, you know, for the immunoglobulin and also for the liver and also for the kidney function. If it's safe, liver and kidney should perform perfectly, Whoa. right? Okay. And immunoglobulin, which oh, is the indicator wow. for our immune, immune should yes. get higher. Oh. You know, so we did that already. All of this have been done my, by my PhD student. There comes the, that we have no doubt now why this professor Dr. Pranayong Aramid will have uh, well entitled to receive a decoration. Talk a little bit on your decoration, your beautiful decoration, each of it. How, how? Uh, uh, what does it mean, each one? You didn't bring it along, right? Oh, I have hit the wrong, but I misunderstanding mm. that is already used in the previous show. I know, but I, anyway. I, you uh, mentioned that. So yes, that we have like a, I have been to Belgium for two years. Yes. Last year is the second time, uh -huh. you know, the year before, I bring my work, which is like a mask, the, the coconut mask, mask uh -huh. that help for the wrinkle uh -huh. and also for the laser. Mm -hmm. You know, we did that before yes. and we get chevalier, uh -huh. which is the first step. So of the, the first decoration. step of the decoration called chevalier yes. from the uh, from mask, Belgium, yes, from Belgium the and for the mass first, European okay. unions. Okay, you know, I get from board organization. Okay, yes. You know, we get the mass, and we also did like a wound dressing. Mm. You know, please make me clarify: the decoration is not just only for only one innovation or invention. Yes, but it has been given to a person who create the innovation continuously, oh. and that innovation can be good for all mankind. Okay. So the first year I show my innovation, uh -huh. I got chevalier. Chevalier, yes. Yes, and then uh, normally they have four steps, uh -huh. as I mentioned earlier, uh -huh. chevalier, uh -huh. uh, yes. officer, yes. commander, mm. and grand officer. Then I asked them, can we jump? <laughs> Instead of go to the second so and third step, uh -huh. can we go up to the final one? Mm. You know, and they said, I have to prove mm. by showing my letter of motivation. Mm. What mm. did I do previously? Mm. What I plan to do in the future? Mm -hmm. And if the committee think that is suitable for me, they will grant me that mm. decoration. Mm -hmm. And I'm really lucky I got that. So since then, I think that is the highest ranking and it's really honors for myself, my family and the country. Thank you very much for being here in the car. And Thank you very much. Obviously you again, wish you luck and everything that you undertake. Thank you so very much. much. And today, we would like to thank uh, Professor Dr. Pranayong Aramid of the Department of Pharmacy Practice, Faculty of Pharmaceutical Science, Chualongkorn University, to talk about her award-winning invention, which was possible only when harvesting sought after Tangshao indigenous silkworms. This is such an amazing discovery, and with it, a big contribution to research and the livestock industry. Thank you for watching Thailand today. I'm Kusuma Yotasmud. Hope to see you again next time. Swadika. So